Not every photo is perfect in its raw, original form. In fact, most e-commerce photos require some sort of photo editing and post-processing before they're ready for use. In some cases, you might want to change the direction a person in your photo is looking. In fact, there is evidence that consumers respond more favorably to images where the model is looking away instead of directly at the camera. The good news is you can change the gaze of a model in a photograph with just a few steps in Photoshop. For the first step, open your image and select the correct layer. Photoshop works with layers for each image. If you're working with a JPEG, you'll only have one layer by default. But if you're working with a layered or composite photo, you need to make sure the layer containing the model's face is selected in the Layers panel. You can do that quickly by heading over to the Layers panel and selecting the corresponding layer. The next thing to do is to open the Neural Filters. Neural Filters are a cool tool that you can find in newer versions of Photoshop. I am working in Photoshop 2022. From the drop-down menu at the top of the application window, choose Filter, Neural Filters. The large Neural Filters dialog box will fill the screen. In the column just right of your image, turn Smart Portrait on. Now, if you do not see the ability to toggle this on or off, you may have to download the filter first. That's fine, just click on the cloud download icon, download the filter, and then you'll be able to work with it. I've already downloaded Smart Portrait, so I'm going to toggle that on. Now in this far right column over here, under Featured, I have the option to change eye direction, and that's the filter we're gonna be working with. Just a side note, if you are working in Photoshop 2021, this is called Gaze, not Eye Direction. They changed the name of it. For the third step, I'm going to adjust the gaze by changing the model's eye direction. Eye direction has only two directions, left and right. Moving the slider to the left, we'll adjust the model's eyes so that she's looking to the left. Now this does take a minute because Adobe Photoshop uses the cloud to render these filters. There you are. See how her eyes are now pointing to the left? I can also move my eye direction to the right. Give it just a minute to do so. See, isn't that cool? At this point, there are no filters to move the eyes up and down, we can only move them left and right. But we can still do a lot just with this feature. For this example, I am going to move her eye back to the left. Now, this may be all you want to do, but for the purposes of example, I'm gonna take this portrait a step further and move not only her eyes to the left, but her head a little to the left as well. So down here, you see some more options. I'm going to choose global. And here you see head direction. I'm going to move the head a little to the left as well. Now, because this particular image has the model's hands in it, the results aren't perfect. That's okay though, we can still apply the head direction and then clean up the image to restore the model's hands and hair. At the bottom of the Neural Filters dialog box, you'll see a drop-down that says Output right here. Make sure Output is set to New Layer, then click OK. After you hit OK, you'll see a new layer above your original layer in your Layers panel right here. This layer contains all the changes you made using Neural Filters and the original unchanged layer sits on the layer underneath. So if I hide that, you can see it. In the Layers panel, make sure this new layer is selected. 
Then look for the Add Layer Mask icon at the bottom of the Layers panel. This icon looks like a black rectangle with a light gray circle inside of it. Click on this Add Layer Mask icon to create a layer mask, like that. Once the layer mask is created, you'll see an additional rectangle appear next to the layer thumbnail within the new layer. This is your mask, and you can toggle between selecting the mask or selecting the layer image by clicking on their respective thumbnails. When you have the layer mask selected, you'll see a broken black rectangle around the mask thumbnail. Now, with your new layer mask selected, use your eraser tool to reveal portions of the original layer underneath. In this case, we'll carefully erase areas to reveal the model's hands in the original layer. Real quick before I do that, a note about masks. I've got my eraser selected over here, and I can adjust my size and my hardness of my eraser. Down here, I have my foreground and background colors. My foreground is set to white, my background is set to black. If I'm in a mask and I have that configuration where the foreground is white, anything I erase will reveal the layer underneath. If I make a mistake, I simply need to switch the foreground to black and the background to white, and it basically gives me the ability to repair. So if you mess up while you erase, simply toggle the foreground color to black and use the eraser tool to restore the pixels you erased. You can also leave the foreground and background colors as is and use the brush tool to paint back erased pixels. I like using the eraser tool though, so that's what I'm going to do. Let me scroll in here and hit her fingers back there. As I mentioned before, as you work, you can adjust the size of the eraser, the hardness, and the opacity using the options bar up here. Keep in mind, this is the most difficult step in the process, and you'll need to work carefully and slowly to achieve a realistic result. It's always best to do these edits by hand so you have a careful attention to detail. For instance, as I worked on this particular image, I needed to repair part of the model's hair and some of the original image's background to get the outcome I wanted. And there we are. The final result looks realistic and we did not need to reshoot the photo.